there. So we took everything off the whole front end, kit and caboodle. And um, we didn't have to disconnect the AC with its, uh, what do you call this thing? Not the radiator, it's a AC condenser. Yeah, we didn't have to disconnect the condenser. So we don't have to refill anything. So yeah, um, it's so much easier to get to guys and work on it. It takes a little bit of time. How long do you think it took us to actually remove everything like this? An hour, maybe hour and a half between us and we're just not really rushing either. All right guys, so what you see here is a 2014 Audi Q5 with its whole front end removed and on the front of the engine. Luckily this engine is this direction versus sideways because we wouldn't have a lot of room, but either way the whole front um, is removed so you can see all the timing chains and tensioners and guide rails. So. Um, we seem like we found a, it seems like we found the problem. Um, look at this chain. This chain is completely loose. This guide, this chain tensioner, um, looks like it's doing its job pushed up. This pushes the guide rail and still we're loose. And this chain tensioner almost has nowhere to go. It's, it's pretty much pushed up against this point. So usually these fail and then you had a, you usually have a catastrophic failure where all the valves get bent and everything. But in this case, um, it did it. Now let me just tell you the th symptoms, okay, of what I was dealing with. Now this started, um, when I bought this vehicle, I think I bought this vehicle at 68, thousand miles something like that and this started happening i think at like seventy two thousand. so about four thousand miles of owning this or maybe even less um i had started having this problem where you start you start your car and it's going starts okay and then eventually it got longer and longer of a time for you to start uh to start the the engine and it's kind of annoying because you can't just press the start button anymore because it would try to start and if it didn't start, it would stop. So you have to hold your button down and that got kind of annoying, but you know what? We kind of dealt with it. And then, you know, we were in driving that for, for, for a while and trying to figure out what it is. We put it up to the computer. It says change the camshaft, camshaft sensor, change the crankshaft position sensor. So um, we changed that, you know, and uh, still nothing. So I'm like, okay, so now I'm trying to find some other things. What could be wrong, you know, with the, with the engine and um finally it got to the point where um we're losing power now now it's delayed um takeoff so it seems like there's a turbo lag you know and then there is and then after that after having a turbo lag it started becoming just forget the turbo it would just barely take off from beginning the turbo doesn't even spool up yet and the engine would not take off and then we got to the point guys where it's just barely moving where if you're trying to accelerate from a stop it's kind of dangerous if you're coming out of an intersection where you need to move fast you really have to time your uh pull out you know pull the way you pull out into the road if there's traffic very correctly because sometimes you pull out you give it gas and it's kind of like and it goes so that could be very dangerous and it was kind of dangerous um so, and then it got to the point where it started making noise in this front cover. And I'm like, what is that? It sounds like a diesel. So I took his front cover off and it looked like the chain looked perfectly fine. Nothing was loose here. You can kind of see it. And then, um, so I put it back on and we were driving for another week and we brought it to another specialist and they're like, you know what? It looks like it's probably your timing issue because it's the correlation is being messed. You know, it's saying the timing and, and the, you know, um, the, it's not correlating properly between all these sensors and that's because your chain chain is stretched or 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 there's some kind of problem in here and um so uh, we drove it home and we ordered all the parts for all this kit which i i think i showed before but if i didn't i will uh, show it later um actually here it is this is the whole new kit this is the kit for uh with the chain two chains the tensioners the seals all the new bolts and um i kept it in the garage uh, for until we came because you know what I don't want to take a chance for this chain to snap or whatever can happen I'm not really sure what else could happen that, uh, that can be catastrophic and now before I pulled this vehicle in here into the shop I'm driving backwards up a small little hill and this did not have any more power you can it's it's like bah, it's bogs down at a small little hill and it kind of bogs down going up too but a little bit more power going forward so I had to turn around and go forward up a small hill just to get it on the surface 
sur level surface and back it into this uh, spot on the lift, guys. So it literally got worse and worse and worse, so dramatically fast at the end. So from 60, from 72,000 miles, it just starts showing weird symptoms. Um, just kind of like uh, starting issues and you know and uh, so not perform and then a little bit later a little bit later and now it just had a, it just it, throughout between 72,000 right now it has 95,000 on it and finally it just got worse and worse every 5,000 miles it got worse to the point where it could not even drive it's like almost impossible to drive now and I and before I even did this I was trying to change the throttle body I was trying to change the sensors I'm like what else possibly could it be so when we're going to put everything back together we'll actually know was it a hundred percent everything to do with the timing because it obviously seems like it so let me just show you how weird this is look at that look at that chain it's just literally flopping around so if you pull this guide rail down off let's see okay uh look at this guys it's this well now that the guide rail is not there but it's crazy how this does not have any more to move it seems like well look at this i took off the guide rail there's a little bit of slack there's slack here see that there's slack here and i can't push the guide rail anymore so it seems like the guide rail can be pushed anymore so the chain gets stretched here and with this guide rail okay we have this slack here actually it was more let's see let me pull that off let me re-pull this So because we have this chain that's loose, now it seems like maybe between these two uh, cams or whatever these are, I'm not really even sure. Now um, it's loose here and that's what's malfunctioning and not uh, allowing it to uh, properly inject the fuel at the right time and the spark or whatever it is. So, and it's not because of this. This is the funny part. This is the thing that actually fails. This can't go anymore. And so the chain tensioner, can't stretch tension the chain, chain, chain anymore now you have this big flop guys which is uh really interesting so hopefully uh we can see after we put everything together and uh, we'll see how it works guys so that those were the symptoms and if you have similar symptoms um there's a good chance that you're lucky that your engine didn't uh, rip a chain or break a chain or something catastrophic failed like this going bad and uh, you can replace it so at the same time, it's a good thing and a bad thing. All right, we'll catch you up when we're done. All right, guys, here we have two chains. One of them is new, one of them is old. We'll show you how much it actually stretched. So see this little dip right here? It's about, I wanna say three quarters, almost uh, five eighths of an inch. That means times two since there's two sides. So that's almost a, a little bit over an inch of stretch. It was all the way fully extended. And remember how that was against that? Oh yeah, you're right. So guys, this uh, tensioner, uh, this guide was all the way pretty much against this point where you couldn't Crank even shot. push anymore. Yeah, you couldn't even push anymore. Here's a new tensioner. This is the one, this is the way it was uh, on the old one. This is how much it was extended. I think it was on the last tooth. Yeah, there was no more teeth anymore actually. That was the last tooth for it. So uh, that's how much shorter it is. So that's that inch. I think we measured about a little bit over an inch of a t a chain stretch. And because of that, that's how much uh, slack there was. You saw it in the beginning, so. All right, guys, so here we have this kit laid out for the timing chain uh, kit replacement. And um, here's what it comes with, okay? And uh, we paid 359.63, it was a pretty good deal. So can you just go over it really quick? What's what, because. Yeah, well, it's from ECS Tuning, the kit, which is really cool. It's not the dealer one. But it's the their aftermarket. And they said that it's literally just as good pretty much, right? Yeah. yeah so it comes with all the bolts, which is nice. You know, they yeah. have the Loctite on them. Oh wow, just that's to nice. Seal it. And, and they and they have a number for everything, so you know exactly where it goes. Yeah, it has the packing list, got all okay. the guides. Both guides, the other tensioner, guides. And this is the tensioner. Other tensioner Where's it? the one that breaks oh this is the this common is the one. one. This yeah. is the one that breaks down and so the new tensioner. You got a brand new front main seal too. Very with nice. Cover. All you gotta do is and look, slide it, even, it over. It even tells you how to do it? Yeah, slide it over, remove the thing, and it's you don't uh, have to like flick and it off. two new chains. Yep. The timing chain got the All right, yeah, very nice guys. Okay, guys, I just wanna show you quickly the old guide rails and um, talk about the old filter that I had inside the engine 
as my chain was loose and bubbling around and shaving down. So here's some of the guide rails. So uh, as you can see, this is one decent guide rail and it has these lips right here. That's for the chain to kind of slide over these, but kind of, kind of keep uh, at least somewhat of a center of a guide for it to not go left and right. And um, this one is okay. This lip is a little bigger. This lip is a little bit smaller. But this main one, this is if you're looking at the front of the engine, this is the one to the right. Uh, this is for the, uh, this is uh, not the one that the time, this, this is not with the, um, this is a guide rail that slides on the timing chain itself, opposite the one that actually pushes it with this um, uh, tensioner, uh, chain tensioner. So this one, because my chain got so loose, guys, it's hard to tell how much we took off, off the top of this, which is, because it's oiled up, it, I don't see a big problem. Um, but the guides on this, both sides of these um, are completely gone. And you can see just a little bit left right here. So that's pretty interesting. And the other thing is, I just wanted to show you, oh, really close. This is the guide. This is the chain tensioner that supposedly goes bad if you have a catastrophic failure. This, let's say, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but let's say this collapses and everything. And um, I found out recently, just there in front of this, on, on the side of your engine, in, uh, on the, well, this is in front of my engine, is there's a little a hole, okay, and there's a little cap that you can pop out. It's like this plastic rubberish cap. And what it's, I believe, is intended to do is to show you um, how far your guide uh, came out. Like, if you see this little spring, this is the end of the road for this um, uh, tensioner. And... If I'm, a, I'm assuming that little window is to open up to see if this is all the way out to the maximum point, okay, that means it, it will not, um, it's already too far. Your chain has stretched. Now, this is my educated guess, but just to let you know, there is a window where you can kind of peek through um, just uh, to check the, you know, I guess the distance, how much this already, you know, expanded and I guess to see if it's maybe malfunctioning, but that's not what it was probably intended to do. So this, by the way, did not fail. It's just extended it all the way to the max point. We changed it anyway. And, um, so our chain stretch. Now here's the old chain. I think it was about an inch, a little bit past an inch of stretch completely. Um, for the most part, that's not an accurate number because the chain is folded and you can't really measure that really well, but comparing it to the other chains, about an inch uh, a little bit over an inch. So this is a good one. This is, we also changed this uh, chain tensioner. Um, and the way they work is by oil pressure, guys. It pushes, but with oil pressure. So um, aside from that, uh, just wanted to show you that uh, you can't really see it, but I cut open my oil filter and there's these nice sparkles everywhere. And that's the, that's the aluminum that was cut out from um, the chain smacking and not following the guide those little rails on each side, it was because it was so loose, it was bobbling around and actually carving into the block and the other portion of the aluminum uh, engine block. And um, luckily I caught, you know, luckily we didn't allow it to do it w too long. And when the engine starts becoming very loud and you didn't have a catastrophic failure where this failed and your, uh, you know, uh, all your valves are bent because the chain skipped so many times and that's, let's say that's catastrophic, but for me, it could have been slowly, slowly, just loud, and I just wouldn't know, wouldn't have known, and I would have continued going until it, you know, uh, made a hole, you know, somewhere else where all the oil would come out, and uh, we were not close, but you, you saw in the video that there was definitely some a lot of wear um, from the chain, and you can even see the chain was smacking around so much, guys. Look at this. Look at that chain it's all damaged and demented. So it's literally, it's been hitting. I can't imagine, this is steel. And aluminum, yes, it's carved out the aluminum. And, um, but it's so interesting. I'm like, it must be hitting, it was, must be hitting something else that's steel for it to do damage on every link. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's see if we can zoom in here. Look at that, guys. It's just all damaged, every single one is damaged a little bit and it's stretched. So I just wanted to point that out to you. This other chain right here, um, did not see if it's, uh, it looked like it's almost the same length. Um, this one was for 
the lower. This is the timing chain itself for the for the valves. And this one, I forgot what this one was. Like I said, I'm not a. Uh, I'm just showing you and explaining to you. Um, a mechanic of mine did this. I didn't do this uh, because it's very. You know, you have to know exactly what you're doing to time and everything. But this one looks good, aside from being stretched just a tad bit. So uh, my filter was filled with all these micro. That's why I changed the filter again. And then I'm going to have to run the engine again a little bit and then clean it again just because I don't want none of those little particles, even though they're aluminum. And of course, they must be some steel particles because these are damaged. Okay, so there must be some kind of uh, micro uh, sparks of, and I don't want it to go get into my crankshaft and, and score the rings and everything. Not the rings, the bearings. Um, so yeah. Not the bearing. What do you call those? They're not a bearing, but they're like a sleeve. Um, technically, it's on the, you know, the shaft is on the oil. So anyway, I don't want to score those. And um, yeah, just wanted to show you this. Uh, keep in mind, if your engine is running and it's running extra loud, like it starts sounding almost like a diesel. Uh, I know these 2.0s already have that small of a tick where it kind of sounds like a diesel. And I, I heard it's because of the direct injection or the way it's timing, you know, the way it's, uh, 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 you know, putting in the fuel or something. But if it starts sounding a lot louder and your engine's still running, but you're just losing power, then, uh, you know, losing power and you're having all those symptoms I talked about earlier in the video, um, you can check that out instead of me repeating it if you're wondering what kind of symptoms I had. But it was still running and running really loud. Just park your car and uh, replace this stuff because if you um, don't and finally something skips extra a couple extra times, you know, and you can damage all your valves. Now that's a really big job versus, you know, all, otherwise replacing the engine. So hopefully this was um, helpful for you guys and see you next time.